Good morning and welcome to the Pleasure for Health podcast. I'm your host, Ailsa Kepi, and I am a somatic sex educator, intimacy and relationship expert, and we are here today to talk about conflict. And that might raise some awareness for some of you who are thinking, what the hell does conflict have to do with good relationships? And it turns out that it might have everything to do with good relationships. And so today we're going to touch on this. We're going to look at how we can make conflict a positive experience in our relationships, how we can, um, you know, find a generative conflict instead of uh, a conflict that tears us apart. And isn't that exactly what we need in the world today? You know, let me know what you think. I'm always open to comments. You can find out more about me at pleasureforhealth.com. Uh, you can also find out about my retreat center where you could come and stay and work with me in person at ourceltichearth.com. All right, so let's get started. So what does conflict have to do with intimacy? Well, it turns out that, you know, my partner and I, my intimate partner and I were discussing this and I had this aha moment of realization that just as in the yin yang symbol if if you're um familiar with that symbol it's the the black and white kind of taoist symbol where the you know the white color sort of fades into the black color and the black fades into the white and they each have the opposite color circle within them as well so it's like this never-ending kind of gradation and i think what we're realizing in the world today is that you know we're not living in a world where we want opposites. We have, you know, a whole spectrum of possibilities. We have a whole spectrum of, you know, uh, genders, of, you know, races, of uh, opinions, and that nobody has to be wrong and right. We don't have to have just conflict or, you know, perfect intimacy. What if we kind of go between both of them and they actually help each other to generate more of what, you know, what we would classify as kind of a, loving connection. So I put this out there that, you know, I asked, how do you deal with conflict? And I think this is something to start with. So, you know, if you're listening um, out there, how do you deal with conflict? How, do you tend to be one of those people that, you know, plays nice and smiles and just kind of backs away? Or do you kind of surreptitiously unfriend all your Facebook friends that don't agree with you? Do you just kind of avoid conflict? Or are you one of those people that, you know, you your heckles rise and you bring up your fists and you're ready for a fight whenever there's something going on? Um, you know, do you kind of raise your voice pretty quickly? Do you get triggered very easily? You know, do you kind of fight back? Is that what you do? You know, we have, you know, we've talked about these types of responses before. It's kind of same as responses to stress, really, because conflict is stressful. Typically, if especially if we don't have good skills to uh, work with conflict, it just becomes a kind of unmanageable stress. So I know many of you out there are feeling that recently in the world and there's lots of conflict and so this these are important things to think about and to work on not to just understand but actually to become masterful at turning conflict into something that is a positive force for change and you know a friend of mine is a master of aikido and anybody who studied aikido can can attest to the value of redirecting a, a someone that's coming at you and ending up going, you know, you end up doing this kind of technique where you end up going the same way as your as your theoretical opponent and that you, you know, you kind of redirect and become friends. So how does that work? Well, it works by, you know, doing a few things, which I'm going to go into here. But what we're trying to get is is take the tension and the conflict and the problems that come up and realize that they're an integral part of life and that we need to actually deal with them, turn them, transform them into something that we can work with. And I, I put it out there, you know, when I was talking about this to another group about, you know, let's say a samurai warrior. I don't know a whole lot about samurai warriors, but I know that, you know, they don't back away. They don't look at an opponent and run away. 
they also don't, you know, they're not trained to look at an opponent and lose their shit and, you know, run into battle unprepared or anything. They're trained to be very present to what is there and to be very present to themselves in that moment so that they're not losing their ground or their center and they're not purposely looking for a fight, but they're absolutely ready to work with whatever comes towards them. And so, you know, if you're thinking about your your relationships or maybe a friend that you tend to get in arguments with or you you have a disagreement with if you can stay present to your own view and also to your friends or partner's view at the same time so you don't run away from it and you also don't fight there's a possibility there for broadening both of your perspectives and maybe coming up with something that is you know, even more profound than either of you would have ever come to on your own or in a world where everyone agreed on everything. So, you know, this is a quote, because we've not learned to be present with ourselves and because we live in a world where there are many structures of oppression and exploitation, we often meet conflict in an adversarial way or in a way that is combative. And that is, you know, a, a truth. You see it all the time. We haven't learned how to, to be present with ourselves. And therefore, you know, we either are fighting from the corner and just a kind of random way, or we're running away from the conflict and not dealing with it. So I want to talk about, you know, really, when we get down to it, I want to talk about, so, you know, how do we actually do this? So let's get into that because this is where it really becomes practical, right? It's all, it's all great to talk about theory, but let's get practical. Now, if you are really exhausted and you just came home from a long day of work and, you know, the traffic conditions were horrendous and you get home and, you know, the baby's screaming and, you, you know, everyone's tired, every, we all can see that that is not the right time or, you know, we're not in the right state to deal with conflict. So it's not the right time to suddenly bring up to your, your partner or spouse, you know, oh, we need to talk about this important thing, right? Now, maybe most, some of us are living in that all the time. And I, I do, that's, you know, um, an unfortunate thing that modern society has brought on us. But what we need to actually know how to do is how to resource ourselves, because if you're living in that type of stress all the time, there's no way that we can deal properly with conflict. So this is where, you know, there's there's millions of coaches and programs out there touting self care. But when it comes down to it, we have to learn how to resource ourselves, how to know what you need in the moment to be to get yourself back to a place of being centered, peaceful, you know, content. You know, and it's not perfect contentment, but let's say you have a hard day of work and, you know, you pull into the driveway instead of running out of your car and right into the house and trying to cook dinner. Maybe you take five minutes in your car to do uh, some breathing just for a few minutes before you transition to your your home life. You know, maybe that's what you need. Maybe you take the long scenic route home so that you get to drive your favorite road and look at the scenery on the way home and kind of leave work work behind. You know, maybe you listen to some really great music that puts you in an awesome mood. Whatever the resources are that help you stay in that place or get you back to that place of calm centeredness, that's what we need. And, you know, in my my uh, example of the samurai warrior, you know, they would have their meditation, they would have their, you know, they would be out in nature, they probably wouldn't be scrolling social media all the time. That really doesn't put you in a grounded place. At least I don't find it does. It's an interesting way to kind of keep up with the world, but it does put you in this kind of whirlwind space. So, you know, nature's great, you know, having a hot bath, having some quiet time, whatever that is, it, you know, to resource yourself is an extremely important part because you, there's no way we can even proceed to dealing with conflict if we're in a total tizzy. Okay, so let's say you resourced yourself, you know how to do that, you've taken a few minutes, you're, you're breathing. What is next in dealing with conflict? Because we still have lots of conflict in our lives and even if we are, you know, meditating professionals, you know, what? how do we actually work with it? 
So the next thing that I think is really important is to notice what the power dynamics are in that particular relationship or situation that you're in. Now, if you have conflict between yourself and um, a systemic you know, a uh, structure, let's say the business that you work for or the, the culture that you live in, if you're in conflict with that, you want to notice what are the power dynamics between you and that structure. So if you feel like you don't have a voice or you feel powerless, um, that comes, you know, that needs to be acknowledged. And, you know, perhaps you are powerless or perhaps you aren't, but you need to actually look at what are the, the power dynamics um, in a relationship, you know, things like the gender of the people involved, the class, the race, um, the amount of money, you know, financial security and stability. All these things lead to um, different power dynamics. So, you know, typically, and it's not always, but typically women feel less powerful than men, although that sometimes changes and is surprising. How about women with each other? Some women feel, you know, less powerful than others. So you want to have a look at what are, and you know, what are the power dynamics that are up in this relationship, in this conflict relationship? And, you know, um, I had a conflict recently with a friend, you know, and it, he was a, a male. So we were about the same age. So the age didn't really come into it too much. Sometimes older people have more power than younger people. Uh, sometimes the other way around. There's some kind of weird age. I don't know where it's at, maybe 70 or so, where it sometimes feels like you lose your power at a certain age and you become less powerful. Um, but there's anyway, there's you know, me and a friend were about the same age. He was a guy and I was, and I'm a woman. So there's some power dynamic there. I feel like, you know, as a man, he, he has more kind of power in our society. You know, it's just a kind of inherent thing in our culture. Uh, you know, whether we like that or not, it kind of a, is, is something that a lot of us experience. So there was that. Um, the fact that he was part of like the majority group in this case, or what seemed like the majority group, the more acceptable group. And, you know, I was in more of the fringe group. So I felt that there was a power dynamic there. Sometimes if you're part of the majority, you have more power than a minority group. So that's an, also an interesting way to look at conflict, you know, and, and what are the power dynamics there? So once you've kind of looked at, well, where are you coming from as far as the power dynamics? And sometimes I've worked, you know, I work with particularly women that have had emotional abuse. And often, you know, we've kind of learned to give up our power as a way to try to get safety or try to get love or something like that, which is, you know, really kind of a weird way of going around it. And I won't dive digress into that too much, but Sometimes we give up our power, hoping that that will bring intimacy. And you know, it really doesn't because the way to get true intimacy is to meet, is to meet that, that conflict with your own power. Now you're, you want to equalize the power dynamics maybe as much as possible, or at least acknowledge that they're there. So you're both starting from that place of awareness. So once you kind of are looking at the power dynamics and you might you might realize that, uh, you know, like, let's say, for example, the Me Too movement, there was a lot of power imbalance between women and men. And once a few women spoke up, once enough women spoke up in the Me Too movement, it became, you know, easier to stand up and say, you know, yes, me too, right? Because we started feeling more powerful. So once you kind of equalize the power, there is a possibility for actually having this type of discussion that, that can create more of a generative conflict than if you know one person is really powerful and one person powerless it's it's difficult to get to get anywhere okay so let's say we've resourced ourselves we're feeling grounded now we've looked at the power dynamics and we've uh, attempted to name them and and perhaps you know acknowledge and and equalize those as best we can the third thing that is really helpful in this is to actually get curious get curious about the other persons or the other structure or you know the person the thing that you're in conflict with get curious about it 
And by curiosity, I don't mean judgment. Don't start judging like, well, they must be crazy to think that, or how could they, you know, how could they come at me with that? No, get curious about why and what and how and who they are and, you know, what's driving them. Get curious about it. And when you can stay in curiosity about the other person's stance, then there's a possibility for a really interesting, you know, mind bending sometimes opening on your part and maybe on their part too. So it can be difficult to stay curious about something that you might feel really passionate about, but don't forget those first two steps I talked about. So the resourcing of yourself is important. If you feel like you need to take a break or you need to go for a walk or you need to come back another time and look at this conflict, maybe that's what you need to do. So if all of a sudden you're in this discussion and you feel under-resourced, you might need to say, hey, I need to go and resource myself. I need to go and, you know, kind of do some journaling so that I am clear on what I think. This comes up, especially if in the power dynamics, there's things like gaslighting or stuff like that. You need to, you know, name that and realize that that's not going to create a kind of generative place. So, you know, taking a time out and, and sensing into whether this is a, this has the possibility of being a generative conflict. So if you both or both parties get really curious about each other, there's like, I can't see it not becoming a really interesting conversation. And of course, what really adds to the complexity and to the interest and to the growth of any society or any person or any business structure, or anything, any business is having different viewpoints, having different people come with different ideas and understandings. If we were all the same, there would be there would be no growth, no opening, no, you know, um, opportunity to kind of expand our worldview. And, you know, that's that's not what I'm interested in. That's not real intimacy. Then I'm just kind of I'd probably be bored, honestly. So as much as we might find there's so much conflict in the world today, there's actually the possibility that this conflict, if we could really come with curiosity, compassion, centeredness, if we can come together with that, that there could be a real intimacy, a real knowing of each other as, you know, fellow human beings in your relationships, you might notice a deepening intimacy when you've actually kind of approached a conflict and stuck with it. There's something really powerful about having someone sit there and listen to you and take what you're saying in and then you listen to them and you take what they're saying and you actually, you know, you pr stay present with each other. You know, wow, it's better than sex sometimes, you know, it's like you really saw me, you heard me, you were there for me, you didn't get up and walk away in disgust, you stayed and listened. And that, and that folks is real intimacy. That's, you know, how conflict can really be generative. Um, so it inspires me actually, you know, more and more to realize that I have people in my life with whom I can have conflict with and come through it to a deeper intimacy. It's uh, been a really generative force in my life and it inspires me to keep going and to, you know, be a better person. So hopefully there's something in this podcast for you that you might take and work on for yourself. Let me know how this sits with you. You can always reach out to book a free consult with me uh, at www.pleasureforhealth.com. I would love to hear from you. Take care.